Good evening. Grace and peace from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome and thank you for coming tonight. I'm David Douthat. I'm the pastor at Catoctin Presbyterian Church in Waterford, Virginia. I'm Molly Douthat, pastor at Furnace Mountain Presbyterian Church in Luckett's, Virginia. This service tonight is designed as a way to acknowledge that even in the midst of our religious and cultural celebrations of the winter holidays, with their lights and decorations, music and feasting, many people are experiencing the reality of loss, sorrow and grief. For some, this will be the first Christmas without a loved one at the table, maybe through, the, through death or just separation from the pandemic. For some, a loss is perhaps of a job or earnings that are making the holiday dimmer a more anxious time than joyful. For some, the suffering that has surrounded us this year has crept into their own hearts. And whatever it is that has brought you here, we want to be honest about that pain and sorrow tonight. But we also want to offer you hope, the true hope of Christmas. So we'll turn to the scriptures and we will turn to God in prayer believing that we can find comfort and strength with the one who loves us, and that you are not alone in this journey. Later in this service, we'll be lighting four candles. If you have some candles at home and want to join us in lighting them, your own candles, we encourage you to do so. We will also offer prayers for healing that we usually use with the laying on of hands and anointing with oil. Obviously, we can't reach you tonight with a physical touch, but if you want, though, we will invite you to anoint yourself as we offer the prayer of blessing. So you need about a teaspoon of oil, olive oil, if you have it, or whatever you have on hand. Whack. Even a little cologne or even some perfume. If you don't, you don't have to use it if you don't want to, and you can still receive a blessing, but it makes it a little more real for you. If it makes it a little more real for you, do that by all means. So now let's take a moment and have a few deep breaths. Calm your hearts, calm your minds. Take a moment to become aware of your body where you feel tension or tightness. And as our yoga instructor would say, breathe into those places, inhale and let your breath go to where that, where you might be feeling tense or tight. Feel the power of your breath, bring life into your body because breath is life. Open yourself to the presence of God as you understand God. And let's begin.
let us worship God. Have compassion on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. I'm sick at heart. How long, O Lord, until you restore me? I am worn out from sobbing. At night I flood my bed with weeping, drenching it with my tears. I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered me, freeing me from all my fears. Those who look to God for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. As we begin tonight, let us offer a prayer of invocation and confession. Invocation is calling on God to be present with us. Usually, a prayer of confession is an admission of the ways that we have failed and fallen short of God's intention for us. But confession can also be a statement of what is true. In this case, that we're hurting and that we hope suffering isn't in vain and that we trust God to be in the midst of it. So let us pray. Your compassion for us overflows, O oh God. We are facing our longest night. We become burdened with sorrow, loneliness, and sadness. We come seeking a place to set them down, a place where our words will be heard and our feelings honored. We need a place where we can drop our masks of good cheer so our tears can flow freely and our faces can wear the cares of all that we are carrying. Be among us this night, O oh God. Let your compassion heal us in this moment. Comfort us, strengthen us, care for us, be Christ to us. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn this evening is one that you might not know, but we'll have the words on the screen for you. Uh, so sing along if you can or if you like, uh, but read the words. They're pretty good. The song is Comfort, Comfort You, My People. Now let us turn to the scriptures. First, we turn to the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, to the book of the prophet Isaiah from chapter 9, 
This is a familiar text for many of us, especially at this time of year. It comes from a time when the prophet was, well, the, the days were hard, and he was prophesying harder days still, but that after those hard days that there was a promise. So listen to Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walk in darkness, they'll see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. And from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, selected verses. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one, who is himself God, is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, if you're here with us tonight, congratulations, you made it. You have survived 100% of the <laughs> toughest days of your life so far. And that's, that's good news. And it's been a heck of a year. Even so, all those hard days take their toll. And it may be that you have someone that you love who can't make that claim, making the days all the harder. And Christmas is supposed to be a joy time. But celebration can feel hollow when it's wrapped with grief. 
I remember the first Christmas after my mom died. Boy, <laughs> 28 years, 27, 20, 28. 27, no, 27, yeah, 27 years yeah, ago. A lot of years ago. And 27. I, I still still get a little verklempt. And that first Christmas without my mom was, well, awkward and quiet. And we had a lot of the form, but not so much of the feeling that year. And maybe that's what you're experiencing this year. It doesn't help that Christmas comes around when it gets so dark so early. And uh, that darkness feels like it's wrapped, wrapping around your heart sometimes, wrapping around your soul. That's one of the reasons why we celebrate Christmas at December 25th. A lot of people think now that it has nothing really to do with when Jesus was actually born. And it had more to do with the early Christians being able to kind of blend with, with the Romans who were celebrating the invincible sun at the winter solstice. The return of the sun. The return of the sun. And I don't know if that's so or not. It's makes sense but the the truth is that human cultures all around the world throughout recorded history and before recorded history have marked the winter solstice and have waited for that day when the light starts to come back that there's something in us that recognizes that we we really need the sun to come back, please. We need the light. We can't go on with this darkness forever. I suppose it's because we're made of light too? Perhaps. And we celebrate Christ as the light of life. So that part is tied, that ties in pretty well too. And as we heard in the passage, passage that Molly read for us from John, that uh, Jesus Christ is the one who brought the light of life into the world that, that he had created, even though many didn't even recognize him. And so the, the story of Christmas regardless of when it happened, it fits our situation here now and at this time of year pretty well. And that, that feeling of spiritual darkness and the grief and the sorrow. As here was a, a child born into a hard world and a harsh world. He was born into poverty. He was pursued by ruthless powers. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, the scriptures tell us. He had a hard life. And yet he came to point us to life and to light and to a life beyond just a mortal existence. And he came to share the struggle of those who were grieving, to share the struggle of the oppressed, to share the struggles of the lonely and outcast, of the broken and the sinful. All the ways that human life can get fractured Jesus came into the world to share that experience and to heal it. And that is why we're here tonight, is because Jesus is the one that was promised. Jesus is God with us. And it seems like, no, oh, it was just a baby 2,000 years ago, but because of the power of God, Jesus lives to this day, and his spirit 
is at work among us. And that same power of healing is available to us today, to you, this night. It is the offer of God. It's not that we get to skip over the grief. It's not that we get the promise of a life without hardship. It's that God is with us in the midst of it and redeems it and promises us a day when grief will pass away, when we will be reunited with the ones that we love, when death will be no more, sin and sorrow and sickness and death will be no more. And that's what we cling to, and that's what we hold on to. And we have as a sign the people of faith that we share our life with, the, the people around us who trust in this Jesus that remind us that we are not alone, that we don't have to travel this journey by ourselves. God is with us, and we are here for each other in God's name. So, beloved, I know that it's been a hard year, and Christmas may be really hard this year, but reach for that, that thought, that hope of the light that comes back into the world, the presence of one who knows your suffering and loves you beyond it and can give you the strength to get through it. And the one who has raised Jesus from the dead as the sign that death doesn't get the final victory. Beloved, I hope you all have a peaceful Christmas. A Christmas that has light, not just the twinkly kind, but the one, <laughs> the light of life, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We're coming now to the part of our service where we're going to light candles. Uh, again, if you have candles with you, light them with us as we get to this point. So the first candle that we're going to light is a candle for the lost ones. This first candle we light to remember those we have, who we have loved and who we have lost. We pause to remember their names, their faces, their voices, the memory that binds them to us in this season. May God's eternal love surround them. The second candle we light is for all our losses. We light it to redeem the pain of loss, the loss of relationships, the loss of jobs, the loss of health, the loss of dreams, and more. We pause to gather up the pain of the past, the pain of a future that will never be. And we offer it to God, asking that from God's hands, we receive the gift of peace. Refresh, restore, renew us, O God, 
and lead us into your future. The third candle we light represents ourselves. This third candle we light is to remember ourselves this Christmas time. We pause and remember these past weeks and months, the disbelief, the anger, the downtimes, the poignancy of reminiscing, the signs of affection from family and friends, and all those who stood with us. We give thanks for the support that we have known. Let us remember that dawn defeats darkness. The fourth candle is for hope. It's lit to remember our faith and the gift of hope that the Christmas story offers us. That'll do it. <laughs> we remember that God, who shares our life, promises us a place and a time with no more pain or suffering. Let us remember the one who shows us the way, who brings the truth, and who bears the light. Let us join together in prayer. In the spirit of this season, let us now confidently ask God for all the things that we need for ourselves as we participate in whatever way we can this Christmas. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. For our families and friends, that they may continue to help and support us, and to the extent we can, that we may help and support them. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. For the people we have loved that have died, for all the losses that we know, that all may be redeemed by your Easter promise. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. For all our family and friends, that they may know love and peace and happiness in you. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. For the peace proclaimed by the Christmas angels to come throughout the whole world, that the oppressed may receive justice, that the poor may receive their fair share, that those in bondage may be set free. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. For all the remaining prayers of our hearts, for your mercy and providence for those things we dare not name aloud and those needs we barely even know, but that are known to you. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. God of great compassion and love, listen to the prayers of these, your people. Grant to all, especially the bereaved and the troubled ones this Christmas, the blessing that we ask in the name of Christ, 
who taught us to pray together saying these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Throughout the history of the church, anointing with oil has been used as a sign and invitation for God's presence and blessing. The word Christ itself comes from the Greek word chrysom, and it means the anointed one. We anoint people with oil in the name of Jesus, the anointed one, at their baptism, showing his claim on them in this life and into the life to come, in ordination to particular ministries of the church, and for healing in body, mind, or spirit. As we said at the beginning, if you would like to receive the anointing with oil tonight, we'll do the blessing part, but you have to apply the oil. So if you haven't already, now's the time to get some. You only need a wee little bit. And you can still receive the blessing without the oil, but the oil might help you feel it. And so I have a little bit of oil here. It's just um, extra virgin olive oil. And so uh, we offer this blessing to you as we pray. Gracious God, source of all healing, in Jesus Christ, you heal the sick and mend the broken. By your spirit, come upon your beloved child who now receives this blessing that she may receive your healing touch, that he may receive your healing touch, that they may receive your healing touch and be made whole to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. And may the God of all mercy forgive you your sins, release you from suffering, and restore you to wholeness and strength in the name of Jesus, who has come into the world. Our closing hymn is a little better known. It is, it came upon the midnight clear.
invite you to extend a hand of blessing to those near you or to the other folks who are sharing this service as we close in prayer. Watch now, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep tonight. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend your sick ones, O Lord Jesus Christ. Rest your weary ones. Bless your dying ones. Soothe your suffering ones. Pity your afflicted ones. Shield your joyous ones. And all for your love's sake. And now, may the God of hope, all hope, Fill us with all joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.